a warm welcome to botany class in the previous class we discussed asexual reproduction in plants in the lower form of the plants today we are going to discuss sexual reproduction in plants sexual reproduction in plants earlier you learned about asexual reproduction with several examples mainly in the lower forms like algae as well as bryophytes let's start this class with sexual reproduction in higher plants before that let us see how sexual reproduction takes place in algae and bryophytes algae and bryophytes as you know it's the lower form of organisms normally the sexual reproduction undergo two main processes namely the production and fusion of gametes the production of gamete the process is called as gametogenesis and the fusion is called as fertilization there are two process under which gametogenesis and fertilization what's meant by gametogenesis the production of gametes the male as well as female gametes are formed by the process called gametogenesis and fertilization is the process of fusion of male and female gametes so this process is included under sexual reproduction let's see how this reproduction this gametogenesis how this reproduction taking place in algae and bryophytes there are three different stages in the gametic fusion named as isogamy anisogamy and oogamy isogamy anisogamy and oogamy what's this isogamy the meaning of iso iso means same or similar so in this fusion fusion isogametic fusion the gametes are fused the gametes or the nature of the gametes are morphologically and physiologically similar gametes as the name indicates iso iso similar gametic fusion how it is similar morphologically and physiologically the gametes are similar that is named as isogametic fusion then anisogamy anisogamy the gametes are either morphologically or physiologically dissimilar dissimilar gametes either morphologically or physiologically is called anisogamy then another type is oogamy both morphologically and physiologically the gametes are dissimilar so there are three different types isogamy anisogamy oogamy isogamy or similar gametes anisogamy either physiologically or morphologically dissimilar gametes oogamy both the gametes are dissimilar completely it is dissimilar morphologically as well as physiologically that type is oogamy and flower is very important you all know about the parts of the flower because flower is the reproductive organ of the plant so this flower already you learned earlier the parts of the flower which consist of four different whorls named as calyx corolla andrisium and gynesium 
everybody admire flower flower what is meant by flower flower is the inspirational tool of the poets and the flower which is the decorative material in all the celebrations we used to decorate with the flowers in tamil literature the five different lands are denoted with different kinds of flower and in some countries the flags are embedded with flags but morphologists they said that the flower is a condensed highly condensed shoot for morphologist a flower is a highly condensed shoot meant for reproduction so morphologist explain the flower is a highly condensed shoot meant for reproduction and there are different worlds of flower as you learned earlier there are four different worlds the first world or the outermost world is called as calyx this is the outermost world of the flower which is <coughs> named as calyx and the second world of the flower this world second world is corolla each corolla uh, this world second world is named as corolla and each segment of this corolla is named as petal before that each the calyx which contains number of whorls number of units so each segment of this calyx is named as sepal each whorl of each segment of the second whorl this is the second whorl of the flower the whole world is the whole world is corolla and it is made up of number of segments each segment is called as each segment of the corolla is called as petal and antrium so antrium and gynecium among this four worlds this antrium which is made up of stamen and the gynecium today we are going to discuss in detail about antrium antrium you know it is the male reproductive part so this antrium which is composed of or it is made up of stamens this is the bisexual flower now this part is the antrium which is composed of number of stamens so this stamen which consists of yeah and the stamen consist of and the and filament the stamen is made up of this is the stamen the stamen which is made up of and the and filament and the and filament in to this anther the pollen grains are present these are the pollen grains the pollen grains which is which is represent as the male gametophyte the pollen grains are represent as the male gametophyte now today you are going to we are going to discuss in detail about the development of anther here there are some diagrams which shows the development of anther so this anther how the anther developed when the anther is young the young anther developed as a homogeneous mass of tissue the young anther develops as a homogeneous homogeneous is the similar kind of cells or same kind of cells so this is the homozygous mass of tissue mass of tissue which is similar cells homozygous cells present inner to the epidermis the outermost layer is called as epidermis inner to the epidermis there are number of homogeneous mass of cells in young it developed in the man in this manner now this anther which looks like it's assume as four lobed structure which looks like a four lobed structure 
here in the initial stage which assumes as a four lobed structure inner to the epidermis you know that outermost world outermost layer of each and every part is made up of epidermis inner to epidermis there are some layers of hypodermis here in the next stage first it is formed the young anther forms as a homogeneous mass of tissue and this hypodermis cells inner to that there are some hypodermis cells these hypodermis cells a row or a few cells are enlarged with conspicuous nucleus the cell of hypodermis enlarge with conspicuous nucleus and it becomes an initial called archosporial cell so this cell functions as a archosporial cell so first stage is the homogeneous mass of cells or tissue then from the hypodermis cells there are few rows of cells or few cells enlarge with conspicuous nucleus and it becomes archosporial cell now this these are the archosporial cells these archosporial cells undergo divisions mainly there are two kinds of division they are periclinal division and anticlinal division there are two types of division periclinal and anticlinal what are the difference the periclinal division which is parallel to each other of the tissue so these all cells are parallel division it divides like this parallel to the tissue periclinal but anticlinal it divides like this this type of division anticlinal division so this is periclinal division this is anticlinal division so both the direction the cells divides now this archosporial cells undergo periclinal division and it forms two different tissues they are primary parietal tissue and primary sporogenous cell how the cells are formed primary parietal cell and primary sporogenous cell the archosporial cell divides periclinally and forms two different kind of tissue the tissue which is present towards the peripheral region as the name is a primary parietal tissue parietal tissue which occurs in the peripheral region towards the periphery and inner to this inner cells they are formed as the primary sporogenous cells now from the archosporial cell there are two different types of tissues are formed they are primary parietal cell and primary sporogenous cell again this primary parietal cell now this primary parietal cell undergo divisions so when it undergo divisions periclinal and anticlinal divisions which produces 2 to 4 layers of there are 2 to 4 layers of anther wall look at this diagram here there are different walls these walls are composed of endothecium the outermost layer is epidermis now it forms endothecium endothecium inner to endothecium it forms middle layers tapetum and so this layer endothecium middle layers and tapetum is formed four two to four layers are formed from the primary parietal cell from primary parietal cell the wall layers are formed what are the wall layers the endothecium here this layer this is the epidermis inner to this this layer here this layer is middle layer and inner to this tapetum inner to epidermis there are endothecium now this sporogenous cell this sporogenous cell primary sporogenous cell undergoes mitotic division it undergo mitotic division and it forms a mass of sporogenous tissue so in this diagram you found that there is a 
sporogenous tissue the wall layers are surrounded by the the uh, sporogenous tissue is surrounded by the wall layers so how this sporogenous tissue formed this is the sporogenous cell which is derived from primary sporogenous cell the primary sporogenous cell undergo mitotic division one word question these are important the primary sporogenous cell undergo mitotic division and it becomes sporogenous tissue now in this anther so here one part one uh, part only enlarged here it come contains epidermis the outer layer is the epidermal layer this layer is middle layer and this layer is tapetum in the mature anther it looks like the outermost layer is epidermis this is the epidermal layer outermost layer in a to this there are endothelium this layer is endothelium endothelium inner to endothelium there are middle layers middle layers there are 2 to 3 layers of middle layer and inner to this middle layer there is tapetum this is tapetum so this is epidermis outermost layer is known as epidermis this layer is endothelium this layer is middle layer and this is tapetum these are the wall layers in the mature anther you may see this wall layers in detail next class you are going to study detailed structure of this mature anther now these all wall layers are developed now the microspor microsporogenesis the next process is known as microsporogenesis what is meant by microsporogenesis it's the process by which formation of microspore microspore it is haploid the microspore is haploid which is represented as n microspore how it is formed the microspore is formed by uh, meiotic division meiotic division of microspore mother cell how this microspore mother cell forms from this primary sporogenous cell mitotic division takes place so it becomes sporogenous tissue now the last generation of sporogenous tissue there are number of stages the last generation of sporogenous tissue become microspore mother cell now this microspore mother cell microspore mother cell is diploid 2n microspore microspore mother cell is diploid 2n microspore mother cell undergo meiotic division when it undergo meiotic division it becomes microspore tetrad so now it forms as a microspore tetrad four haploid microspores are formed so at first in the first stage microspore tetrads are formed here there are four different haploid microspores are there they may be arranged in linear there are four cells 1 2 3 and 4 linear either it is arranged linear or decussate in this form or isobilateral or several or it is arranged in t shaped this is the structure of t shape the 
tetrahedral microscope arranged in different shapes now this tet uh, microspore tetrad from the microspore tetrad each microspore is derived so each microspore is developed in the final stage and the microspores remains located in each lobe and becomes the pollen grain now it becomes the pollen grain so in this way the and the developed so pollen grains are formed under uh, i hope that you understand very clear so these all diagrams are very important you draw practice all these diagrams in the class note you do not have the book now so you follow these diagrams this is the first stage and how this anthers are developed and the wall is developed and how this microspore tetrad is formed finally from the microspore tetrad microspore and pollen grains are developed learn all these questions before the next class thank you